the World Cup Champions of 1999. What a victory for the Giants! A fantastic effort. Come on, man! There's Pakistan wins the World Cup, and makes Nicholas a performance. The man who's been largely responsible for his own election. Welcome to the match point and welcome to our brand new set. Happy new year to all of you. 71 years, 31 series, 98 tests, 272 players been involved and 29 captains and men in blue have done it. The history has been created. Virat Kohli and men in blue have beat Australia in their den and they became the first ever Asian team in the history of cricket to beat Australia in Australia over the years span of more than 100 years and this is the history what Virat Kohli and their team has done while their neighbors have been beaten convincingly by the Springboks in their home Cape Town after being beaten in the home in Abu Dhabi and Dubai by the Kiwis by then neighbors of the Springboks and now Springboks have beaten Pakistan 2-0 in
As an Asian fan, one Asian team, the wonders they are doing in the Australia has been never done successfully in the last 71 years. But kya hua ji? One more Pakistani is doing wonder over here. And I last time I told you, Usman Khan Shinwari, who was a part of the Pakistan team before, but right now not the part of the Pakistan current squad. He is playing from the Melbourne Renegades, uh, the same league uh, and the same department from where once Shane Warne was playing and the Ben uh, McDermott, uh, one of the Australian stars, he is also the part of the, uh, this uh, league. He uh, grabbed three wickets by giving only miserly 16 runs from the last four overs and they won the match because of his bowling. Uh, Pakistan have announced and the 16 member squad for the five match ODI series I told you previously. So here is the cue card for the Pakistan ODI squad which has been announced under lot of controversies. Again the skipper Sarfaraz Ahmed leading the team and now you can see on the card Babar Azam uh, after the Sarfaraz Ahmed captain wicket keeper Fahim Ashraf Fakhar Zaman Hassan Ali Hussain Talat Imad Vaseem is back in the squad Imamul Haq Muhammad Amir Muhammad Hafiz is back in the house after taking the retirement from the test circuit and now he is ready to play the limited over matches. And then Mohammad Rizwan, the wicket keeper, Shadab Khan, Shaheen Shah Afridi, Shan Masood, Shweb Malik and Usman Khan Shinwari. So what Vaseem Akram, the batting guru, the bowling guru and the all-rounder guru in guru, Pakistan ka guru Vaseem Akram, what he is saying. He is absolutely happy on India's performance and he is saying this is something very amazing. And lot of people are saying, critics are saying that this Indian team won because uh, of the Australian legend's absence uh, in their team and they are saying that the Australian team were not having the likes of David Warner, having the Smith. Uh, but even then, don't forget that the Pakistan team and the team India, Sunil Gwaskar's India and the Amran Khan's Pakistan were having the famous tour of 1984-85 when the Kim Hughes side were playing the rebel sides and then and the Ellen Border took on the new uh, new players like the Terry Alderman, Carl Rackman, Marv Hughes in the team and Stephen Waugh new in the team and they have been beaten convincingly by the same weak Australian side in their home. There is no other team else than England which was beaten in the past convincingly Aussies in their home. Might be you are interested to know that who beat Australia when in Australia. Don't forget this is match point. I will tell you later on who beat Australia when and when Australia was beating marginally and when Australia was beating convincingly. Anyhow, Vaseem Akram having a full praise for Jaspreet Bhumra uh, Bhuvi and uh, Ishant Sharma and he is very happy to see the magnificent pace generated by them and they said they won the series that was very exciting and this is a massive deal in the cricketing world. South African captain Fad Duplessis has been banned for the one match and has been fined for the 20% of his match fee because of the slow over run rate and uh, this is what uh, you can understand now that the uh, tension was mounting on the Sirfraz head. That's why the poor decision of having the spinner in the first test was because of this factor. Because already Sirfraz was banned in the previous years uh, for having the four pacers. And this time it was Fard Dupusi who was fined and he will be skipping the next match. His players have been fined also 10% of their match fee for a slow overrun rate in the South Africa's innings and in the same victory of 9 wicket win versus the Pakistan Shaheens in the Cape Town. Fantastic to see. Uh, the next news is regarding the football stars. I would have told you and you will be jumping out of your seats. The Krachiites, the Lyari guys who are seeing the show, they will be exciting to know that the two of the legends are in the Pakistan. Yep. You are uh, absolutely right if you are knowing this. There's Kaka, the Brazilian superstar and the hero of the game in the 2002 World Cup along with Rivaldo and Ronaldo and Babito. The famous trio, the Kaka is right now. He is in Pakistan and Luis Figo, the Portuguese star 
unfortunately he couldn't win any european cup or any other world cup but he was the one who laid the foundation for cristiano ronaldo's portugal and today portugal where they have reached it is because of the deco figo and these uh, big giants uh, from the portuguese uh, football nation and they are over here in the pakistan to promote the world soccer stars 2019 tournament you can see in over picks so let's move about uh, from the football we will be jumping back to the cricket and from the leagues to leagues from the bbl uh, from the bangladesh premier league from the australian league now we will jump back to over league what is over league pakistan super league psl superstars and psl rising stars in the lahore kalandar salman irshad and another uh, kalandar haris rahuf they are very excited the kalandars are right now uh, in uh, australia they were practicing and they have got the chance to bowl the batting mystery of virat kohli in the nets and you will be seeing in the videos how they were bowling in the nets and how was this amazing experience to bowl against the one of the best in the business right now so this bowling have been done in the sydney in the pitch uh, before the preparation of their final test for the uh, indian team and i hope they would have learned and this will go a long way as salman rishad is, uh, is saying so before closing the headlines and going to the break it's a time for then 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 the killer factor so this killer factor is regarding one of the aussie space battery peter siddel who is back in the australian squad he has been named in the australian squad which has about to begin the matches against the men in blue who is the team to watch currently in australia but this is not the killer factor that peter siddel is included in the team but of course this is the killer factor that peter siddel has been back in the australian squad since 2010 those long old days 2010 and the month was november november 2010 was the last time when peter siddel was in the australian squad and if i count on the fingers who was in that team might be you can recall i am unable to recall right now but peter siddel in between missed 169 odis till current date without the australian team and he will be back with the australian team at the match number 170th from where he left the australian team back in 2010 in the 133 years history of international cricket this is the longest comeback of any international player this is a world record and also an australian longest record to come back in the team uh, having a amazing performance and the one most super topping for this killer factor dhan 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 what is that that team which played with peter siddel in 2010 in the month of november nine players have got retired from the international cricket and out of nine eight have been not playing even the leagues have left the league so peter siddel is only old horse and who knows might be the trump card to win against men in blues when the kangaroos will see and catch men in blue we will take a short break you are watching match point and i will be right back welcome back on the show welcome back on the match point we are discussing the pakistan's loss versus south africa and of course the men in blue indian win over australian soil the first ever asian team so we will discuss them one by one what was happening in south africa first we will jump to the south africa but before jumping to the south africa i must tell you about junaid khan the headline which i will give you that junaid khan has been left out of the odi squad of making him declaring him unfit and at the same time bangladesh premier league saying thank you very much and keeping him in the team they said the chief selector said that junaid is not fit enough to join the pakistan team in south africa his last 13 odis if i pick 93.5 overs 
एट मेडन फोर जीरो सेवन रन कंसीडेड एटीन विकेट ही टोक एट द मेयर इकोनमी ऑफ एटीन पॉइंट थ्री फोर वुड यू बिलीव दैट द चीफ सेलेक्टर इज सेंग दैट ही इज नॉट फिट एंड ही इज नॉट कैपेबल ऑफ प्लेइंग इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया जुनेद खान वॉज नॉट पिक्ड इन द ओडीआई बिकॉज ऑफ द फिटनेस कंसर्न बट who cares for the selection committee selection committee is already put the doubts in our mind and doubts in the mind of a uh, lot of fans because previously saying that fakhar is fit shadab khan is fit and then the drastic decisions which are making the pakistan conditions at their worst this is because of this selection committee and the, this new PC, pcb committee and the chief selector in zamamul haq who is the culprit in this uh, squad picking uh, you can see on lot of channels where the pakistani stars and the pakistan uh, old cricketers and the legends they are been openly uh, saying up and they are criticizing this selection issue which has been uh, now uh, coming openly in the media for the odi selection before the junaid khan's fitness he was just imagine he was involved in the national 2020 cricket with no signs of any fitness problem and he was bowling to his full peak when even i was observing him and i was seeing in this national t20 cup and then the second you just jump on the asif ali asif ali whom i told you about uh, about his details uh, 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 that he is playing from the islamabad united he is the dean jones favorite man he changed the game for them in the last season when they won the trophy in the crunch matches against the gladiators against the skipper sarfraz team and the muin khan team Uh, that was the trump card with dean jones used to say and also wasim akram used to say when he was the part of the united and but then dropping him and saying him that he, he is inconsistent looks like to me that the chief selector and his squad sorry to say they are insane they uh, they are misunderstanding his violent nature i mean if they are saying that he is scoring less and vigorously this is the Uh, part of his job for which he has been assigned in the islamabad united and the pakistan team as it described earlier has to play in the third power play because if he will not be valent at the third power play then there is a no use of number 5 and number 6 at that position the same which michael bevan was doing for the australia back in the early 2000 era and even until 2007 he was doing for them so this is what they are confusing and they need to make clear that what is the role of asif ali asif ali's role is not to anchor the innings for pakistan his role is to uh, flare up and slogging in the third power play and the six down five downs when you are having only two to three overs there is no need of their uh, uh, to have a concentration or have an anchor role if chief selector is having this in the mind four scores of 30 plus in the last eight innings as a hitter i think it is fair enough to prove him and uh, prove him that he is consistently performing better in this very format when it comes to the limited over cricket anyhow we will jump quickly to the pakistan versus south africa what's happening actually not what happening what happened because no what's happening is a paperwork pakistan has lost the series in uh, the away tour and pakistan was already struggling in their own home and now uh, uh, obviously the team morale was already down after the defeat by the hand of kiwis about 18 days ago within the 18 days time they have been beaten convincingly again uh, by this time not by the kiwis but by their neighbor springboks and in pakistan's uh, uh, away game pakistan now two down versus uh, south africa horrible batting display by the pakistan imamul haq the opener the last nine innings if i uh, pick for the imamul haq 8 6 0 27 12 6 27 20, total runs of 144 at the mere average of 16 Imamul Haq's nine test scores if i go now outside uae not in the pakistan's alternate home 7 18 4 34 0 27 57 0 6 8 so mashallah se imam is improving now uh, outside the home and in the away games but this has been a serious blow for pakistan i'm not kidding 
because he failed to provide anchor to Pakistan. Consistently, he has failed to perform. Azhar Ali, his partner, he's a senior. Uh, he's a senior guy. He's a senior partner, and he's very good in this format. But even Azhar Ali was struggling. He was afraid to face. the south african bowlers rabada and flander and might be in their mind it would have been lagging somewhere that hafiz has taken the decision of departing pakistan test team the fears of dale stein or the fears of the springboks or the fears of cape town johannesburg new town whatever was in his mind but already one player was back home and already declared so might be the pressure shifting uh, to the next man or to the youngsters that if hafiz is not performing and doesn't want to face uh, a pace battery of springboks so why do i so this factor obviously comes was not a good sign from hafiz he should if he wants the retirement he should have taken after the springbok tour uh, south african tour not before the south african tour anyways uh, now if you see adam markram the uh, south african star and the hall of fame he opened the innings for south africa as we are discussing amam that's why i'm telling you he opened for the south africa in the under 19 cricket world cup final in the 2014 and the same time imamul haq also opened the batting for team pakistan the under 19 then the under 19 teams back in 2014 for pakistan since then markram developed himself into the world class batsman while imam techniques remains the same and at the same poor imam is struggling and don't forget that is the same world cup where rabada hit the stage and he took the wickets and he played a vital role in the south africans victory and right now in the today's world he is having a 159 test wickets in his uh, feather so this is the difference how champions have been created this is the story of champions how they have been uh, created pcb has not organized any pakistan a tour which i was seeing for the south africa since 2003 this is also a big dilemma that why you are unable to produce the players indian team consistently playing ipl leave ipl still they are playing ranji trophy still they are playing the first class games the structure of the indian cricket is better than the pakistan cricket and yet they are producing and many more pujaras yet to be produced from them from the same ranji trophies uh, prithvi shah and lot other names you pick and they are coming from the same trophies and pakistan is having no a pakistan a games have been happening in the pakistan and that's why pakistan has been struggling in the south african conditions pakistan has been playing international cricket for now over 66 years and there have been a tours uh, if you say the a tours there has been only one major a tour which has been done in the pakistan the cricket 13 out of 16 players in the pakistan squad were not having the experience of playing in the south africa and they were exposed to this cruel field which we say the south africa the grounds of cape town and johannesburg and pressure was mounting on these guys one of the reasons pakistani batsmen struggling the last time when pakistan did the a tour that was 2009 back in australia and south africa only there is a one time in the 66 years history when pakistan team visited south uh, pakistan a team visited south africa and that was back in 2003 and before that pakistan team the first time when went for the pakistan a for the tour that was 1998 when pakistan went to the new zealand to the kiwis uh, to their home and these are the only times three times when pakistan played pakistan a played against uh, them since the end of october 2016 pakistan has played now 21 matches and they have lost 14 out of 21 games south africa last seven home series if contrary to that i pick them 1 1 1 all seven series have been convincingly won by them and they have defeated their opponents whoever they were and among them was also the virat kohli's team india who were beaten in the south africa by the south africa in their home sir faraz said that if we had uh, played two or more practice games 
the results would have been different might be sir fraz is right that he was not given the time to acclimatize to the weather and the south african conditions but still there is no excuse uh, he says the position would have different pakistan horrible touch with the batting and disastrous disastrous batting collapses was notable in this very series in pakistan versus south africa if i go back to the past and tell you you will be surprised that since misbahul haq and yunus khan has left pakistan those days they have batted 22 times in the test cricket in 11 of those innings the scores uh without them the score would have 177 181 190 156 in uae 227 177 these last three scores are in the uae 174 134 262 248 and 114 these are the scores when misba and yunus departed and what pakistan team is doing pakistan's batting woes in the south africa are not new they are well known but the pakistan's poor performance on the tour is down because of their batting that they failed to reach 300 in the fourth innings across two tests they never touched the 300 but it hit a new low in the cape town when they made a new record that pakistan team became the first ever team in the history of competitive test cricket where one team failed to reach and touch 200 runs in the four consecutive games this was the blow for the pakistan team what bowlers will do bowlers cannot defend so low targets even wasim akram or walker yunus or shoaib akhtar or the mighty imran khan or the pakistan prime minister even cannot Uh, save all the games for Pakistan and so less totals because at least you give some fighting total to your bowlers to fight. They were bowled out for sub 200 totals in the two innings in Centurions and the last innings in Abu Dhabi. And Pakistan the cricket can only do well if they figure out why Babar Azam, Imam Ul Haq, Sami Aslam, and three of your best under 19 batsmen in the world they are having. scored only one century in 142 games babar azam managed to make his one million ton after the 17 games while his competitors adan markram virat kohli are having the piles of century in every game so discussion will continue but i got the signal for a break we will have to go for a quick short break when i will come back from the break we will start right from here pakistan versus south africa you are watching match point welcome back after the break so we were discussing the pakistan's failure in the south africa and lot of criticism was also going on the fawad alam alam Uh, a huge debacle on every channel is going on why fawad is not the part of the pakistan team and other man who is the man in form in the local cricket he is improving he is scoring uh, uh, at the even at the late age he is scoring in the first class and he is abid ali his name has been taken again and again so the same discussion why fawad ali why abid ali could not be a part of the pakistan team so might be वो आंखों का तारा नहीं थे फॉर द चीफ सेलेक्टर इन जमामुल हक ही इज़ इन द बेस्ट कैपेसिटी टू डिस्क्राइब वाई इमाम एंड द अदर मेंबर्स हु आर नॉट परफॉर्मिंग आर इन द टीम एंड वाई दीज गाइस गाइस हैव नॉट बीन गिवन द चांस इवन फवाद इज परफॉर्मिंग कंसिस्टेंटली बैक इन द स्कॉटलैंड बैक इन द यू के द सीजन विच ही वॉज स्पेंडिंग लास्ट ईयर ट्वेंटी एटीन ही वॉज परफॉर्मिंग बेल इट वॉज ऑल इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस एंड आबिद हैविंग अ ब्रिलियंट फॉर्म इन द फर्स्ट क्लास क्रिकेट if this was not the criteria of keeping them in the team that what was the criteria why fawad and abid have been kept out in the nation wants the answer everyone is asking after this south african heavy defeat by the hand of the south africa via nine wickets and then if you say shan masood is in shan is performing shan is not performing initially but then in the one match he performing is showing that his technique is little bit better but still keeping in mind that shan masood is having no psl matches he has never played any pakistan super league match imam ul haq no psl ever 
No Pakistan Super League has ever been picking Imam Al Haq, but still he is the part of the limited format. Why? If he would have been uh, uh, so uh, having a, a good batting track, he would have been definitely be a part of some of the Pakistan's franchise in the most popular PSL. But he is not the part of any uh, uh, PSL. Azhar Ali, he, he was playing in the Pakistan Super League one, but he was not picked up in the drafting. He was not the part of the two, and he was not the part of the three with the Lahore Kalandars. Asad and Haris, they are sharing between six matches in the two PSL seasons and yet they are the part of the Pakistan team. So the criteria of picking is that either you are seeing the T20 league uh, fashion or either you are seeing the uh, first class structure, the A games uh, or the departmental games. So it is pretty much vague what Mickey Arthur and what uh, Inzamam ul Haq are thinking. Recently, uh, about one week back, I was in one buffet and I was uh, just on my food uh, when uh, one of the uh, uh, one of men just uh, came behind me and I was involved in eating and I was busy seeing the food stuff and I was not knowing that he wants to talk to me and he suddenly came to me and he said uh, that Dr. Saab, team kya kya kiya, ye kya kar rahe hai? He was interesting to know that what's happening with the Pakistan team, what's the criteria of Pakistan batsmen, are they able to make 100 score? Can they make an individual century? He was very doubtful. He was asking me. So I gave him only one answer. I said, as you are ignorant as much as I'm ignorant about this poor Pakistan batting lineup, as much as he was not knowing, as long as I'm not knowing, even Mickey and the chief selector, they are not knowing what's happening with the Pakistan team. But I replied him, that's one strange thing I have seen in the Pakistan team. Pakistan team, if you keep uh, uh, your openers Imam and Fakhar at number 9 and number 10, right? And if you pick Shaheen Shah Afridi and Abbas at number 1 and number 2, they will play the same game. There is no top order, there is no middle order, there is no lower order. But what's that? What's there? There's only Mickey order. This is what I told him and I'm telling you. So there is a Mickey order in the Pakistan team until we will finalize that how to rule out this Mickey order. Pakistan is unable to create the proper opening, the top order, middle order and the lower order. So this is the dilemma of Pakistan cricket. Anyhow, coming back to the Pakistan, Pakistan had only one warm-up game uh, in the Benoi against the, uh, the, uh, the South African 11, invitation 11, which they have won by six wickets. But Sarfraz still believes that one game was not enough to come back in the form for the team Pakistan. And he is thinking that if they have played two or more games, it would have been better for the Pakistan team because I think he is comparing right uh, to the English tour. When last time he kept in Pakistan after the Miss Mahal Haq, so he took the team and they played the two games. The result came into their favour. So I think uh, Sir Faraz is making some hypothesis to relate uh, these games uh, to them. And Sir Faraz then I also told that in 2016, uh, he was saying that same way uh, when they went to the Somerset, the county of Ian Botham, and the Surrey, the county of uh, Wakar Yunus and Alex Stewart, the 1992 uh, English wicketkeeper, the famous counties, Pakistan had two tours and were the two counties and then Pakistan are having the solid partnership and Pakistan played brilliantly in England. So Sir Faraz was saying that at least two matches needed to create your rhythm and position might would have been different. Uh, so, Pakistan uh, uh, now uh, when played two practice games in England uh, previously in the Mispas time and in the 2016 tour and also again in the 2016 to 18 tour when they went under uh, Captain Sir Faraz Ahmed and they both time managed to draw. 2016 they draw 2 2 and at the time of Sir Faraz they uh, drew 1 1 and they won the famous match of Lords. Lords is meant to be the Pakistan's ground in the both uh, destinations 
uh, I was saying uh, to the fans and the Pakistan team fans that whenever Pakistan is going away from London, either in Edgbaston, either in Manchester, Pakistan has been beaten. And Pakistan coming back to the London, either in Oval, either in Lords, Pakistan has been winning. And same happened. Team Pakistan came back to the London after from Edgbaston and they won the game. The famous ground of Oval where also they won the championship. They won the 2009 uh, uh, World Cup T20. Yeah, and again, they are winning the Champions Trophy also in those lucky grounds. Now, there was 18 days gap as I told you in the headline when the Pakistan last played against New Zealand in Abu Dhabi. They were already under stress when Kane Williamson's team unbelievably shattered them and they needed with the 7 wickets, they needed only 30 or 25 runs and they were unable to manage that. And the senior player Azhar Ali on the other end with his 50 all the way he was watching the scenario that what's happening and he failed to achieve the target even with his presence he was failed to rotate the tail along with him i still remember and very angry on that criminal shot which was played by the yasser shah at that critical moment when pakistan needed absolutely the runs and the no rubbish shot and pakistan lost the match against uh, kiwis and kiwis making the history after 1969 and beating pakistan in the desert in their alternate home and registering their first ever victory in the last four decades kevin peterson after the surfraz ahmed also is showing some sympathies to Pakistan. He is saying that it is not easy to bat on these pitches all the way, uh, acclimatizing the pitches when you were coming from the subcontinent. He is saying, I agree that Pakistan team was given very less time, only 18 days. This is not fair and not enough to acclimatize. Difficult place for, for the tourists and Peterson still believes that the lack of experience of the South African condition is the major debacle of the Pakistan's downfall and they are unable to put the fighting totals for the opposition. And at the same time, Peter uh, Kevin KP said that still uh, if for the English team, for us and for the Springboks, for the Aussies, if you say go to the subcontinent pitches in the Sri Lanka, in Colombo, in New Delhi, in Mumbai, we were suffering like the same and might be more worse than that. And after, if someone will say me, just arriving from an aeroplane and just play a match, this is a disaster. Should have been ruled out by the ICC or the board should have had some suggestions to settle down this position. Peterson, on the other hand, was also impressed by the South African opener whom I told you was the hero of the Under-14 Cricket World Cup in 2014, Adrian Markram. He told that he scored 78 in the last first innings in the Cape Town. Brilliant batsman and he praised his strategy and strategies and technique to play the Pakistani Pacers. He said that he was brilliantly playing Muhammad Abbas, knowing cleverly that Abbas is not having the pace. He cannot generate the pace and he was even not generating the bounce from these pitches and he there was only one way to play Abbas who was the most successful bowler in the last games and the last series of the Pakistan most wicked getter from the fast bowling side from the Pakistan but they were having a technique Adrian Markram was playing all the time on the front foot he was not keeping him back just to avoid the LBWO so he was saying that this is what the clever cricket and this is what how you create good from great not the good batsman the great batsman this is the line you draw that why Imam is not performing Azhar is not performing why Markram young Markram is performing so this is the one he was mini playing like this he was minimizing his chances of trapping LBWO against the Pakistani Pacers he is a smart cricketer clever cricketer and clever in this procedure and when Pakistan turn was on did you see any Pakistani batsman doing this to Philander who was uh, uh, the average pace bowler if you compare with the Pakistani greats and should not have been difficulty for the Pakistan batsman uh, to face him here if you give the game to the Pujara and the Virat Kohli and we will see how they will deal with the Philander he is an average bowler but Pakistani bowlers were unable to cope with the pace of Philander and Abbas if you see very economical bowler over the uh, throughout his career and last year he considered the economy rate of 2.27 in the test 
but the clever South African batsmen along with a Markaram were manipulating a pass around the corners. Even though he took the wickets, but even then they were they were manipulating him around the ground. He was unable uh, to uh, penetrate against them. He played really good, but this is the problem that was he playing good around the world at every corner outside the subcontinent outside the alternate home no so that's what you need to adopt and pakistan was not doing and not doing big dilemma that land of fast bowlers unable to achieve the pace this was the big factor pakistan have won only two tests in south africa both due to the extreme pace of shoaib akhtar if i go back in the past Durban back in the 1998 and Port of Elizabeth back in 2007 both games were won because of the fierce pace battery including Shoaib Akhtar and Shoaib Akhtar single handedly bundled South Africa out of both games those are the good old days but today our pacers are even unable to generate 130 km in a single match so this is the dilemma for the pakistans uh, so we will just um, uh, continue this uh, discussion but we will have to take a short break and when i will come back from a break we will discussing little bit of india versus south africa we will jump quickly to the uh, india versus australia before folding the show you are watching match point you can follow me on the greatest empire usa facebook and youtube page keep watching match point i will be right back Welcome back after the break so we were discussing Pakistan versus South Africa and of course we will go to the India versus Australia men in blue beating Australia in their 10 for the first ever time in the history of cricket so quickly from where uh, we left the show in the before the break so Pakistan is focusing uh, what do i believe on the T20 cricket and the same thing Australia is doing that's why Australia is also struggling Australia was the team who was once they're playing the scientific cricket but now they have more concentration on the BBL and on the T20 leagues but at least i will vote pakistan better than the australia because at least pakistan is doing better in that format pakistan is convincingly beating the opponents at every ground and that for very very format and australia is even failed to beat in that format also their oppositions most of the time so still pakistan is the best keep your hopes alive pakistan uh, uh, was playing with a yasser in the centurion the game before the cape town and that mickey arthur says when i was reading the article that that was the huge mistake to play with a yasser they misread the pitch and they needed the fourth pacer and he was willing mickey was feeling if time would have go back in the past he would have picked fahim ashraf why fahim ashraf i will tell you why it was in the Mickey's mind because he is giving him a fourth seamer and both South Africa and Pakistan were playing with the three seamers and one spinner in the first test and then the slow bowlers were hardly required in the game you can see the failure of the spin bowlers that Kashif Maharaj also was failing uh, from the South African side and Yasser Shah their master spinner who was uh, he is the fastest to get the 200 wickets and who has virtually broken out lot of old english records and the cricket records was failed to impress on the south african wickets yasser bowled 11 overs and kashif 14 and pakistan have five pacers abbas amir fahim asan ali and shaheen afridi section member squad and abbas who was unfortunately not available he was available in second match but still result was the same but pakistan uh, rhythm uh, pakistan was not getting even hasan ali was included and then hasan ali was dropped but a part of the hasan ali ouster and the abbas was in result was the same natija wohi dhak ke teen path fahim ashraf was the only option as a fourth seamer which again miki even knowingly that he is wanting them wanting to try fahim ashraf but he couldn't uh, couldn't do that i don't know it was a team decision it was a chief selector decision or it was a coach decision but they couldn't pick him like that pakistan's both win if you remember in the uae uae outside uh, uae ireland in the malahide and then versus england at uh, lords 
came with the four seamers when Fahim Ashraf was there. Fahim, uh, left-handed, was scoring crucial 83 on Mela Hyde, if you remember. And then at the Lords, he was making 37 runs down the order when it was needed at the number 5, number 6 uh, to anchor the innings and to uh, uh, sail Pakistan's ship uh, to the uh, coast. And that was Fahim Ashraf was doing. But I think what was ringing in the Sir Fraz head, what I told you that he was afraid of that poor run rate history. Already three times he was fined for the slow over run rate. So I think this was in Sir Fraz's mind to av avoid the fourth seamer because he was knowing uh, that if the fourth seamer is there, there is a must fine, and that's why he wanted to include the uh, one spinner in the side. And that's why that joke was trolling. We were listening on the nowadays cameras are very smart and the speakers are very smart. Azal Ali was going to ball, and Sir Fraz was shouting, Jaldi Karle, Jaldi Karle, Malcolm Marshall. So, uh, and he was, uh, he was just annoyed by the a long run up of uh, Azhar Ali and he was screaming at him. So that's why this thing was ringing in his ear and decision must have been affected. And the second test in the Cape Town came, again a very strong decision. They couldn't keep Yasir Shah out. What was the reason? Cape Town is the pitch which is given chances to the spinners to spin the game. But unfortunately, Pakistan couldn't do this. If you remember the old game in the time of Misbahul Haq when Pakistan reached over here, Yasir Shah, before Yasir Shah, here the spinner along with the Misbahul Haq, Saeed Ajmal took 10 wickets in the Cape Town. And later on in the press conference, Misbah was regretting that why he didn't include Abdul Rahman, the second spinner. So this was the thing which was ringing in his ears and that's why Yasir Shah was again included. But again, the decision was not good. After the so much good phase, Yasir was able to take only one wicket in these games. Time for the trivia factor. Few diplacy if I uh, talk about the South African skipper. He became the first captain to score a century after scoring the duck and after bagging a pair in the previous test. South African batsman who scored century immediately after the pair in the test. They are Jackie McGlew versus England back in 1955, Jacques Palace versus Sri Lanka in 2012, and now Duplessis versus Pakistan after bagging a pair and then huge century and the match winning knock and if we go to another trivia uh, you will be uh, enjoying to know this that on this very day in 1992 a very sad day to lot of pakistani fans back in the 1992 this was the last day of one of the longest career and most successful career in the history of pakistan cricket when pakistan's prime minister career which began in 1971 uh, taking 362 wickets including the famous spell against India in 1980 against the Sunil Gavaskar, Vishwanath and the betting legends of Australia, uh, betting legends of India and taking 40 wickets in that one series which is still a record for the Pakistan against India and hitting the six test centuries he was just on this very day he left the cricket world and he left the cricket and test cricket for Pakistan when Imran retired from the test cricket on this very day back in the 92 despite being 39 years old he was ranked 15th in the test batsman ranking and 7th in the test bowling rankings and very interesting trivia on the topping of this and on the top of that I want to tell you that why Imran was ranked this because right when Imran left the cricket next day the ranking was introduced in the ICC that was the last day when the cricket was played without the ranking when same like the tennis phenomena and the other top seed one seed two seed the ranking has been started in the cricket so Quickly, we need to jump from big one, India versus Australia. Congratulations to the India to become the first ever Asian team to win the test series in Australia. Huge achievement and another feather in the King's Kohli cap. Man of the series for India, two men, so it was men of the series. Their batting sensation, Pujara and Bumrah, the deadly Yorkers of Bumrah, the two game changers for India, which played a vital role in this Virat Kohli's team to spun the game away from Australia. Asian teams 
टेस्ट रिकॉर्ड इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया इफ यू आर कीन टू नो आई ब्रॉट इट फॉर यू इंडिया दे हैव प्ले ट्वेल्व गेम्स दे वन वन लॉस्ट एट ड्रॉन थ्री बिफोर दिस एंड पाकिस्तान प्लेइंग ट्वेल्व विनिंग जीरो लॉस्ट नाइन ड्रॉ थ्री दिस इज वॉट आई एम टेलिंग यू अबाउट द सीरीज एंड श्रीलंका प्लेड सिक्स सीरीज एंड दे हैव ऑल्सो लॉस जीरो सीरीज बट दे आर इवन अनएबल टू विन अ सिंगल गेम इन द ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन द ऑस्ट्रेलिया कॉन्टिनेंट एंड बांग्लादेश playing one and the losing one a short history better luck dude next time visiting teams who won the series against australia as i told you at the beginning of the show that i will take you to the those uh, countries who have beaten australia the magic of beating australia in australia england have done it record 13 times because they are frequently coming over here they are one of the most frequent visitors since 133 years who come every year to play the ashes and then the west indian team back in the 1979 80 and 84 85 in the viv richards era and 1988 89 viv richards and the last time when they came under the richie richardson and the new and the young man brian lara was with them under the captaincy of richie richardson they beat australia in 92 93 so after the england the most successful uh, team was the west indies beating them four times and then south africa beating them three times in 2008 12 and 16 while new zealand have done it only one time under the feather of sir richard headley in 1985 86 against the underdogs of kim hughes and the new allen border side and india have done now 2018 29 becoming the first asian team to achieve this amazing feat india are the first team in last 30 years to enforce follow on to australia in australia excellent work i say by the virat kohli and his company test centuries by the indians batting at number 3 in australia Chideshwar Pujara is now at the five centuries, and all other people having a combined six centuries against Australia. Two by the Amar Nath, Mohinder Amar Nath. Two by the Lakshman, and one by the Dravid and the great Wing Sarkar. Indian scoring three or more hundreds in the Test series outside Asia. Four at the top of the list is Gavaskar versus West Indies in 1970-71. But don't forget. on the top there is also a batting mystery of virat kohli is also having the four against australia in 2018 19 while three for the gavaskar in the 1977 78 series three for the dravid versus england in 2002 and then again three for the dravid versus england in 2011 while if you want to know that whether pakistani batsmen have done it ever or not so i want to tell you that mohammad yusuf is the only man who have done it for pakistan so far highest scores versus australia in the last 4 years 290 by taylor dismissed by loin uh, 244 cook not out 255 uh, 205 azhar ali not out and all other out pujara 202 and 193 every time dismissed by their spin mystery or nathan loin but unfortunately it could not favor team australia rishab pant first indian wicket keeper to score test century in england first indian wicket keeper to score test century in australia no test centuries uh, scored by the other indian wicket keepers including the likes of mahindra singh dhoni or sayed kirmani wicket keepers in the sina countries the rest of them indian zero and rishab pant two rishab pant the first indian wicket keeper to score a test century against england last year and he repeated the feat and get the highest score ever in the history of indian cricket and indian wicket keeper versus australia in australia he is only 21 years of age and nine uh, uh, test old and he is a he is showing that how strong is the replacement bench for the india this shows the scientific days of australia in the early 2000 that why australian cricket was strong hats off to rishab pant centuries by the indian batsman in the test in the sina countries december 2011 onwards all other indians are having combined 10 centuries and batting mystery of virat kohli only having 10 centuries alone in his pocket fastest to get the 25 centuries 68 is the fastest the bread man but in the modern era cricket only one batting mystery of virat kohli 127 
uh, matches he took for this while the Sachin Tendulkar taking 130, Gwaskar 138 and Hedden at 139. Quickly I have to uh, go to the end of the show that a part of the exciting Boxing Day test and the end of the year 2018 is gone. I am talking about the legends and the centuries. Lot of them bagged a pair at the end of the 2018. Virat Kohli, for WC, Sir Faraz Ahmed, three exciting skippers got the duck. Pujara, the batting mysterio, also getting the duck. Azhar Ali, Imam, Markaram, these all also got the ducks in the 2018. Australia have not played a follow-on innings at home in the 30 years. Last time, the last instance before this, when Australia played a follow-on game, that was back in the 1988 versus the England, versus the Graham Gooch and the Ian Botham's uh, England in SCG Sydney Cricket Ground when they were enforced follow-on. Follow on. And if you go anywhere outside Australia, 2005 was the last time against Trent Bridge against England when they were follow on and this is now the second third time when Australia have been enforced follow on. Kohli has not lost any of the 21 tosses when he won uh, 21 tests when he won the toss. Same for the blood men in only 10 tests. Colin Cordray, one defeat in 17 tests. Duplessis, one in 14. Williamson, one in 11. Colin Cordray is having only one defeat. One of the legends, Sir Colin Cordray, from the English team. Three of the five captains with lowest losing percentage after winning the test. Virat Kohli, 0.00. Don Bradman, 0.00. Sir Colin Cordray, 5.88. And then for WC and Williamson at 7.14 and 9.01. Virat Kohli, talked about uh, those days that about the winning the toss he uh, he told about taking the captaincy from uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni that this is the part I want to cherish that when I, when I win the toss I don't want to lose the game and that's why the combined these captains if I tell you out of 48 games if I say you about the Williamson, Duplessis and the Kohli about the 48 games combined these three captains have played and two times they have lost after winning the toss but Virat Kohli with a 100% record Let's have a look on these pictures and it will be reminding you and creating a nostalgia in your mind with Australia's retro kit. Yes, Australia is going to use the retro kit in the coming ODIs versus Team India. And this is reminding me of the 5 a.m. alarm ringing in my ears back in the 80s with a cup of tea and putting the TV on, Craig McDermott, Bruce Reed and Simon Ordinal opening the bowling for Australia and then the struggling Mohsin Khan, Qasem Umar and suddenly the wickets falling for the Pakistan and Javed Miyadad coming to rescue Pakistan and in the meantime listening the great Richie Beno voice with the same retro kit which Australia is wearing right now. Richie Beno coming and saying what a marvelous day of cricket and setting up the match for us and throwing the mic to Bill Lurry and chapel for the first tent of commentary at the end of the show i have to wrap it with a killer factor then 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 so it's a time of a killer factor i have to close the show with this exciting factor justin langer who was a newly appointed coach of the team australia has recently taken over from the darren lemon when he has resigned from the coaching seat along with the David Warner and the Steven Smith saga. Langer vowed to take Australia to the new heights as when he was the part of the Australian team back in the late 90s and in the early 2000s. But this is not a killer factor. Interesting point is this, that this is the first official series for the Justin Langer along with the team Australia. So as a first series, as a coach, he lost the series. A big time champion in his game, along with the team Australia. This time, he lost the feat. But this is not the killer factor. Killer factor is this, that this is his first chance with team Australia as a coach. In the past if i go back to 1991 and 1992 against the mighty west indies 
of the Richie Richardson, Carl Hooper, Brian Charles Lara. He did debut against them in the 92. At that time, he also lost the game and Australia lost the series. In between the first game when Australia lost the series and then 26 games which he played until his career 2006-2007. He never lost any series. That was the only time when he lost the series when he was with the Australian squad. The record was otherwise 100%. And then with his coaching uh, now uh, uh, tenure, this is the first defeat. So we will see in the killer factor that how long his career can go like as a player career. So this was the end of the show. I hope you would have liked when next time I will come, Pakistan would have finished the test. India would have started the ODI series and Pakistan will be padding up for the ODI series and we will see that whether Hafiz and the other company, Hussain Talat, who have reached South Africa, can they change the fate of the team Pakistan or not? Till then, Dr. Adnan says you goodbye from the studios. Take care and bye-bye. Are you 2018? 2018? Just 2019? Just breathe, India is winning because of Pacers? And now it's a time for a killer factor! So, a uh, lot of... Oh, welcome back. Here. While the neighbors have been beaten consistently by another defeat. Yeah, you have to do it. 169? Karunji Shuru. Yeah, we're going